anything. I'm going to start the recording. And again, if anyone recorded that, uh, let me know. I'd welcome that. In general. Uh, that's that's awesome. And, and I'll see if I can post it. But um, I want to now take off um, from what we've just put in place with this model and start to think about its implications for um, what is it telling us about the impact of capturing heterogeneity as it manifests in agent-based models, individual level models on the one hand versus aggregate models on the other. So first of all, we have two concerns indicated here in this uh, at an individual level. Um, one for smoking, one for heart disease, right? Are they totally independent here? Is, is, is heart disease a solitude compared to, 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 to smoking? No. No, we just said that smoking impacts heart disease, right? It impacts the rate of developing heart disease. So we see state charts, well, we, we articulate them um uh separately um they're not solitudes right we but we factorize them we we sort of separate them out um almost as if they're orthogonal almost as if they're you know independent i mean we, we specify each kind of a modular way but we can can capture these interactions between them but i want i want you to Tell me, I want you to help me think through what a model would look like, a system dynamics model, an aggregate model would look like that tried to capture this. So I'm going to say new model. You can follow along if you'd like. I'm not going to require you to hand this in, but um, um, system dynamics. Uh, I'll call SD aggregate smoking heart disease um, uh, thought piece. Okay, uh, just give me a, a sort of thought piece. Model. I'm not going to fully define it, but I want to think through. So, okay, so we want to capture smoking and its interaction with heart disease here. Hmm. So I had asked you to watch a video, and, and, and that video should get you thinking. Um, so one thing I could do, and I'm, I'm going to, oh, oh, my goodness, what did I do? This is crazy. I, oh, my goodness. Do, do what I say, not what I do. Um, so uh, let, me, let me get rid of this. I, I was like, out to lunch. Um, so uh, I'm going to do new, what am I doing? This is a crazy thing. Um, here we go. I'm not a new model, not a, a new agent type. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, okay. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm going to put down a, a little thought piece. I'm going to say, well, you tell me. I, I, I want to challenge you more. No. So, so if I want to capture the factors in an SD model, what would what could I do? Tell me, tell me something, you know, not ludicrous to, to start putting down. What would I need to put down to capture capture that? What what would an example stock be? I might have anyone. Okay, heart disease stock. Great, great. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put down heart disease. Okay, good. Give me another stock to have. Okay, okay. I gotta say, a population is a sum of a bunch of stocks. So, so well, that's it's true, Rachel, that there is a population. It's an aspect of state. Often we treat it as kind of mediated by the state so it's 
kind of a sum up of, of different states. We don't capture it explicitly on itself, but it's a point well taken and we, we will capture that. It's just kind of a sum up of things. But give me an aspect of state that I want to capture. Okay, uh, healthy. So it, so that would be like no heart disease. What, what did I call it in that? What did I call it in that model? Healthy heart, okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call it healthy heart. There we go. Um, healthy heart. Okay. Um, there we go. Great. Okay. Give me. So so I want to capture heart disease, but I also want to capture smoking's impact on on heart disease. Okay. 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 So so um, I'm gonna put down never smokers. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And what else do I need? Or, or tell me something else you think. Okay, Clinton says smokers. So okay, I'm gonna put down smokers. Okay, smokers. Yeah, and and what else? Okay, former smoker. Okay, okay, okay. And let's, let's put it down. Former smoker. Okay. Mm 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 mm. Great. Okay. Now, um, this is kind of the nouns. Where are the verbs? The verbs are the flows, right? That's where the action is. I mean, the stocks are the aspects of state, but, but if we want to think where the action is, where the change takes place, it's with the flows. So where would the flows go? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so, okay, this is, this is good. I like this discussion. Okay, begin it, never smoker. Okay, okay, so I'm hearing... I'm hearing something like this, yeah. Um, so this is like initiation. Um, now, if some of you are starting to feel a bit of queasiness, um, it's because you have good intuition. Um, don't 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 think I'm agreeing with all this uh, deeply, but I'm 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 translating your wishes into into uh, a model here. Um, so uh, I, I'm going to have uh, from smokers to former smokers. What is this going to be called? Mm -hmm. I'll call it cessation. Okay, there we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, what else do I need? Someone said earlier, right? Um, uh, okay. Okay. So so what else do I need? I need to put. Um, Okay, so so oh my goodness, my goodness. Let's let's just get this there. And what's this one going to be? What does this functionally represent? Someone who was a former smoker and becomes a smoker, it's relapsing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I I want people to be thinking hard about this though. Okay. And 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 be asking themselves, is this is this really gonna work? Okay. And and then what I'm hearing is. I need some flows from the from the top. So okay, so like never smokers, uh, like what never smokers develop a healthy heart. What, what does this mean? Like like someone said earlier, like add flows from the top to the bottom. Okay, so 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 someone develops a healthy healthy heart and. Well, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little bit more generous. Um, I won't I won't bring it all crashing down too quick. So uh, Mark did point out, okay, we we need something like developing heart disease. Okay, mm hmm, mm hmm. Okay, mm hmm, mm hmm. This is looking awfully good. Okay, um, mm hmm. So tell me. So what else should I what what else do I have to do? And what what's missing here? Okay, death stock. Good, 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 good. I like it. Um so we can capture death in a in a in a couple ways. Where where should death leave from? We we uh where should it leave from? Where should it leave from? Okay, from both bottom stocks. Okay, so um, here we go. Um, there we go. Uh, like that, right? Um, 
Uh, so they should be, um, what, what do we, what do we call it in, uh, over here? We called it like death from natural causes, right? And there we go. Um, and I'll, I'll put that in place here. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I'm going to have, uh, another flow from where another flow from where, where am I going to put this flow from? So I'm dropping it in. Yeah, a heart disease to the sink. Yeah. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, there we go. And uh, okay. So so this will be death with heart disease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looks mighty fine. Someone might mistakenly think. We're going down a road that ain't a good one, um, but you're going to have to figure out why. Okay, so. Some of you should be thinking, what is this not, not capturing? Okay, we need to have a link of never smoker and smoker to influence development of heart disease. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so, so, so you could do something like this, and if so, you're you're actually developing something that has a certain internal logic. So, where would this link go, for example, smoker? Where would it, where would it go? Where might it go? Say developing heart disease, something like that. Okay, so like smokers make development of heart disease more likely. Okay, something like that. Who develops? Okay, all top stocks need to flow in and they need to flow to where? Developing heart tissue should be the expected values of the three starts. Yes, yes, not link to developing. Okay, I'm, um, depends on all the stocks to heart disease. Okay, let me let me ask uh, a question. Suppose we have a million people in the population. What is the sum of these three stocks? You tell me. We have a million people in the population. What's the sum of those three stocks? A million, good, good, good. What's the sum of these two stocks? These two bottom ones. What's the sum of them? Also one million. Okay. Okay. So this is a legitimate way of trying to capture that. And what Mark said was that, and quite right, was that the rate of developing heart disease would could be treated as kind of some sort of average of the rates associated with smokers for never smokers and, and former smokers, right? Um, and so the idea is like smokers would impose a higher rate of, of developing heart disease is the, is the idea, right? So you have a lot of smokers around that imposes a higher rate of having, of developing heart disease, okay? And uh, never smokers has, you know, have lower rates and former smokers. Have... But I, I want you to think hard about this. Who's, who's at risk of developing heart disease? Is it the entire population here? Or is it people up here who have a what? Who have a... Okay, let me let me put it this way. Suppose you have smokers here. Suppose they already all have heart disease. Do they contribute to a higher rate of people with a healthy heart developing heart disease? No. Suppose former smokers, 75% of them have heart disease. Do they do? But suppose they're half the population. Should that but 75% already of heart disease. 
are all all of those former smokers going to be contributing to sort of raising this risk of developing heart disease because they have a much higher risk than, than, than never a smoker? No, right? It's like the people that are contributing to this risk of developing heart disease are the ones up here in each of these categories who are not already, have, de have not already developed heart disease, right? Here we're kind of, if, if we take this kind of weighted average, right, that smokers have a certain probability per year to open you know, heart disease, um, and maybe there's 25% of them in the population. So we'll call it 25 times, you know, we'll, we'll call it a hazard rate H sub sub smoker plus so it's 0.25 times H sub smoker because it's 25% of the population or smokers. Maybe former smokers are 50% of the population. So it's 0.5 times H sub former smokers, a hazard rate of developing heart disease for former smokers. And maybe the balance of the people, 25% are never smokers. So it's 0.25 times this. No, no, because this group of smokers may be disproportionately already uh, have heart disease. So we're, we're somehow not capturing the groups at risk here. We could try to do it this way, but we start end up, we, we end up getting rather in a messy situation because we have to assume that kind of the group influencing this has the same division among them as, as in this general population. Suppose we instead wanted to capture so, so here we have a million people across these stocks, right? Maybe there's 250,000 here, 250,000 here, 500,000 here, you know. Um, and maybe here there's, you know, uh, 70, 750,000 and 250,000. But if we want to capture the fact that we want to find this effective intervention programs of prevention and 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 cessation and and relapse prevention um those are focused on different groups of of of, of smokers we could try to capture it up here but we'd be changing the proportions of each of these stocks that are uh in heart disease or healthy heart etc um, do we care if a person uh, are or not a smoker after they get heart disease? Okay, so that's a very good question. Um, uh, after they develop heart disease, uh, do we care whether or not they're a smoker? Well, you could argue, look, if I want to argue how many people will I need to handle in my intervention, I might care about, um, you know, smokers, uh, the number of people who are currently smoking and the number that are former, formerly smoking. But you could treat someone once they've developed heart disease as, yeah, no, we're, we're no longer going to keep track of whether or not they're smoking. So what would be a way that we might keep track of someone having their smoking status and their heart disease status in the same diagram here? What would be the, in one stock and flow diagram? What what would it be? I'm gonna I'm gonna call this now version version two. What what could I do if I wanted to keep track of whether people have heart disease or not um, here while keeping track also of their smoking status? So I I know okay among former smokers is a larger fraction that do not have heart disease uh, already. Than there are among current smokers or there are about former smokers. More states is right. Can you tell me how? Six stocks. Darn right. Darn right. So now I would, I could get rid of these, right? Uh, here we go. Um, uh, exactly. And now we see the hideous explosion. Exactly. <laughs> Sophia used the same word. It's hideous, right? Because now we have never smokers, um, uh, healthy heart, right? Um, we have smokers 
healthy heart, right? We have former smokers, healthy heart, right? And now we've got to, ah, now we've got to deal with all combinations of those with, with heart disease, right? So we would have to like essentially take this and like replicate it. I'm going to copy it here and I'm going to paste it. And, and now I'm going to change each of these instead of saying healthy heart, what is it going to say now? What is it going to say now? Okay, heart disease. Yeah, it's going to say heart disease. Okay. Okay. Um, right. Um, and this is going to be similarly heart disease. You know? mm -hmm. um, and now this is going to be uh, heart disease. Right. Um, okay. And Now, what has to be done? These are so this is relapsing with heart disease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and it was asked earlier, do we really need to distinguish them once they fail heart disease? It's a very good question. For the for the moment, I'm going to put this in here. But what needs to be put in place still? What do we need to do? Okay, it makes it easier to understand. Uh, flow between top and bottom. Okay, yeah. So there's this flow here. Huh? Hey, get this, get this down here. Take a look at this. There we go. Okay, okay. So what could you describe? What does this flow represent? What what does that flow particular flow represent? Never smokers, never smokers, uh, smokers developing heart disease, right? And I mean, it's almost uh, it's it's distressingly tedious. It's distressingly it's hideously sort of combinatorial. It's um, uh, just, you know, uh, sort of boilerplate almost, um, but we'd have smokers developing heart disease, right? And we would have uh, here, former smokers developing heart disease, right? Okay, so this is uh, former smokers, developing heart disease. Now, are there flows backwards here? Are there flows back from never smokers having heart disease to never smokers having a healthy heart? No, right? We said heart disease develops, it sticks. Once it develops, it sticks. Could we characterize in this model the differential risks of developing heart disease for someone who's a current smoker? By the way, this should say uh, uh, current smokers, not smokers, current smokers, right? Um, like that. Could we say current smokers have a higher risk of developing uh, developing heart disease than former smokers do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we can very readily, right? This, the, the, the hazard rate, the chance per unit time of of coming across for current could be much higher than for never and former could be somewhere perhaps in between, um, right? Or, or perhaps, yeah, it could be, uh, yeah. In any case, uh, okay, okay. Why do we have six stocks here? Why do we have six? Let me ask this. This one, how many how many states do we have here? Five. We have never current farmer, 
we have healthy heart heart disease. Yes, okay, so here we have all combinations. Why do we need all combinations here? Whereas we don't here. Yes, an agent here can only be in one of these three. And they're also simultaneously in one of these two. Can the current smoking status impact the progression through here in this agent-based model? Can, can there being a current smoker affect their likelihood of developing heart disease for an agent-based model? You bet it can. Here, we couldn't really do that. We kind of started with that, but it got messy. Right? We're thinking, okay, but but former smoke, you know, current smokers might already have mostly developed heart disease, so that there's not as many of them in the non-heart disease populations, so they're not going to be increasing the risk as much. Here, we have to consider if we really want to, you know, boil it down. We have to consider all combinations of them. It's combinatorially. It's combinatorial. Mm -hmm. What if I wanted to also keep track if people vaped or not? Some people smoke and vape. Some people only vape. Some people do neither. What would I need? What would I need to do? Suppose we wanted to capture the fact that People who vape also have somewhat different heart disease risk, and it also raises the risk of developing, of starting to smoke or quitting smoking. Maybe some people use the vaping instead of smoking to, to quit. What do, we, what do we need to do if we, we want to represent vaping and, and sort of starting vaping and stopping vaping? More copy-paste. And to use Sophia's incredibly apt term, the term of the day, it would be hideous. We'd have at least twice the number of stocks because each of these, we'd need a, for each of these, we'd need a version of it with vaping and without vaping. Now, suppose we want to do this for every age category because suppose, put aside vaping for a moment, suppose we wanted to represent the fact that people are, more likely to start smoking in different ages. And suppose we had 17 age categories, zero to four, five through nine, 10 to 14, et cetera, all the way up to 80 plus. Yeah, this ladies and gentlemen is the hideous reality when you start to try to take into account heterogeneity, particularly dynamic heterogeneity in these models. Let me ask those different age groups, would there be need to be any flow between them if we were looking out 30 years, 40 years? Would there need to be any flow? Is it possible someone from a zero to four age group might leave that age group over the course of 50 years? Yes. So now we'd, we'd somehow need copies of this for every age group and they'd need to age along there. Suppose in contrast, we wanted to represent 17 age groups here. Suppose we want to do a state chart. It's not the only option. We can actually do a continuous age very nicely. But suppose we want to do a state chart. Zero to four years old, five to nine, 10 to 14, 15 to 19, et cetera. Suppose we want to do a state chart. Would we need to do all possible combinations with this here, with these ones? No, we wouldn't. We just have a different state chart. It's called age state chart. And it would have 17 states in it and people's progression along them. Is it possible that state chart, that if they were in teenage years, that we could capture them as being more likely to initiate smoking? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly, Rachel. Um, exactly. But, but if we want to capture the fact that teenage years, someone's more likely to smoke could be captured, yeah, we can. If we want to do it in an in a, in a aggregate model, we have this combinatorial explosion. In order to distinguish people with different characteristics, certain age, a certain smoking status, 
a certain heart disease status, maybe a certain vaping status. We need to turn it into a separate stock because stocks capture the state. Those distinguished people, the fact that they are in a different stock allows them to be subject to different flows with different rates out. But we need to consider all these combinations of them, the legitimate combinations. Whereas it's very different in an agent-based model. We don't have to we don't have to keep track of all the combinations because a person is in exactly one of these at a time, exactly one of these, and exactly one of the age groups at a given time. And they transition here among these, and it might depend on their age. They transition among these, might depend on their age and their smoking status. But we don't need to keep track simultaneously of the count of people with a certain combination. We, we just keep track of the exact state someone is in with respect to each of these state charts. And as Mark emphasized, and they are in this single state in this state chart and this state in this state chart and the state in this other state chart. In that original stock and flow where we had smoking status and heart disease status, we didn't have that way of saying, oh, the person is in this one, the current smoker, and in this other one and the lower one. Oh, we didn't have a way to do that. We just had to sort of say, well, the population is divided here. We couldn't really say oh, one person is here and here, right? It's just the count of people here, the count of people up here. We have no way to say, well, it's the same person. Person 394 is, you know, in this state here and that state there. No, it's just a count of numbers that are in each of the, the, the heart disease states and each of the, the current states. So remember, in aggregate models, we face combinatorial explosion to deal with, with dealing with heterogeneity. We have to consider all combinations and, and distinguish them in different stocks. And there's ways you can kind of, with subscripting, trying to paper it over, but it ends up getting really confusing with all the, all the different flows. You have to duplicate these and have kind of conceptually, and you have these flows coming out in different directions. Whereas, in an agent-based model, at an individual level, we don't have to duplicate it in that way. The final thing I'll say, and then I'm going to let you go, is that here we can keep track of their history, when they got heart disease, when they last smoked, for how many years they were a smoker. We can just keep track of when they came into the state, when they left that state, when they re-enter, et cetera. We can keep track of their the history of a person. Can we keep track of a person's history here when they developed heart disease, when they developed, started smoking, how long they spent in this state? No, we can't. We can't carry around these aspects of history, capturing people's trajectories, their history over time in an aggregate model like we can't. in an individual based model. And those are some big differences for heterogeneity, capturing differences within the population. It scales really badly for aggregate modeling, like combinatorial explosion, geometric. If you have 17 age categories and two, two smoking or two heart disease status, you got 17 times two, 34. And then if you have three subsequent smoking statuses, you have another times three, and each of them is multiplicative. Here, it's additive. Take that to heart. Heterogeneity kills in aggregate models. It scales much more gracefully in agent-based models, in individual-based models, and we can keep track of history. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a key lesson for today. So I'll look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Thank you again very, very much. And I'll be sending out some mail about office hours or posting an announcement about it. Thanks again to all for bearing with this uh, final week of time away.